Hey, this is Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com, and welcome back to Discovering After Effects. In this lesson, we're going to go over one of the major concepts that you really need to wrap your head around to be able to use After Effects, and that concept is masks. If you've ever used programs like Flash or Photoshop, it's possible that you're familiar with masks. They're pretty simple, but it's really important that you understand them because the more you understand them, the better you can use them. So we're going to start by going over how to simply draw masks, what masks are, and what they do. So here I have my medium cyan solid. Just a regular solid, nothing special about it. And I'm going to draw a mask on it. Up here in your toolbar, there are a couple tools for drawing masks. The first is the shape tools. And so you have rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, and star. And so those are just pre-made shapes that you can draw and we'll make masks in that shape. There's also the pen tool. And so you can draw your own masks with this pen tool and make custom shapes. You can also edit the pre-made shapes with that pen tool. And so very similar to drawing with a pen in, in maybe Illustrator or Photoshop, um, works very, very similar. So I'm going to delete my masks. And one thing that's important is that I have that layer selected. Whatever layer you have selected, that's what you're going to be drawing a mask on. And so if you don't have a layer selected, and you start drawing, this actually makes a shape. And so that's more of a vector drawing rather than a mask of a layer. And so that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about selecting a layer and masking it with either the pen or shapes. So that's basically how you draw a mask. But once you draw a mask, there's a few different controls you probably want to know about. And so I'm just going to draw a random shape here and maybe a star. So when I draw masks, they show up in my layer here. And so there's a twirl down thing called masks. And then each of these masks, I can twirl down even more to open my mask controls. And so there's a mask path, which pretty much just talks about the actual shape that you're drawing. So this is what you would use to maybe keyframe your position of your masks or the, even the shape of your masks, uh, which I'll show you right now. So I'm just gonna hit my stopwatch here and it sets a keyframe at the beginning. Maybe I'll go to five seconds and I'm gonna pick this mask, double click on it, that selects my mask and I can scale this. And it looks like I'm scaling the whole layer, but I'm actually just scaling the mask. And so I can also move points around in the mask and change its shape over time. And it automatically interpolates that over time. Pretty cool. One thing that is super annoying about After Effects, probably the most frustrating thing um, trying to learn how to deal with masks is how to select them and how to work with them. So if I select this right here, I have all my masks selected, but I'm actually selecting the layer. And so if I move this around, I'm moving the layer around. You can see in the position, I'm actually changing the position of this layer. So that's not what I want if I'm talking about moving masks. So a quick way to do this is you can either double click on the edge of a mask and you can move that around and this is just moving my first mask. Or once you have a layer selected, you can just kind of click off screen. And there you'll see that I can see my little points here. Then I can grab my points and actually move them. And a lot of the time you'll accidentally select your whole mask. And so if each point is a square, that means you have the whole mask selected. So any point that you select is a solid yellow square. And so I can just move these points. And I'm just holding shift and clicking new points to... Uh, to move it around. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing, but you have to get your head around, you know, how to actually change your masks and what you're changing. You gotta be careful you're not moving the whole layer around. You kind of get in the habit of, you know, clicking off screen and then clicking back on or clicking just off the layer and then clicking back on, and then you can move it around. So back to my controls, I can keyframe my mask path. There's also mask feather. 
and that just basically softens the edges of these masks and so I can feather it, make it soft, and a little note here, this button, toggle mask and shape path visibility, that button is your friend because a lot of the time you're trying to, you know, make a shape look a certain way or you're trying to rotoscope something and you don't want to see this bright path, you want to see actually what it looks like in real life. And so you can click this off and it will remove the visibility of that mask. The only part that sucks about that is if you forget that this is on, you can get into a really frustrating situation where you're trying to select your mask but you can't. Really annoying. So for now I'll click it off and here we have feather I can see see my nice soft edges there. There's also mask opacity and that just controls the opacity of that specific mask and so I have my opacity of my layer which which obviously controls the transparency of the whole layer but I also have opacity for each mask and so I can make this mask you know lighter than say this mask and what's cool about that is let's say I have this at a hundred and then this mask at 50, I can take my layer, I can fade them both down at the same time. And so I can kind of set them relative to each other or relative to the layer. And there's also mask expansion. This is pretty useful. And all it does is just expand or contract your mask. And so if I expand this, it just grows the mask all the way out, or I can shrink it. So those are the basic controls of a mask. There's also a mask's mode, and this just controls how a mask interacts with the layer. And most of the time, you'll just be going with add or subtract. So I'll delete this other mask. And it's pretty simple. If you make this mask an add, you're basically just showing the pixels that are inside that mask. You can also switch it to subtract, which just shows pixels that are not inside that mask. And so you can also invert your subtraction or invert your addition. And so those two are, are pretty much interchangeable and what's cool is if you have a bunch of masks and you know you want one mask to uh, to take a certain element out and one mask to add a certain element in, maybe they're not working right, you can actually mix and match these layers as well as the inversions. And so that's enough mask knowledge to make you dangerous. So. So that's all fine and dandy, but how would you use this in a real world situation? One of the major uses for masks in After Effects is isolating different elements in a scene. So right here I have a shot of a no parking sign at night. And this is just a still image, and it's made from this image right here. And this was shot actually at dusk, and it's just one layer, regular image, nothing special but I use masks to isolate this sign and make kind of a cool effect here. And so I'm gonna kind of walk you through that. Here's the comp without any effects. So the first thing I did was duplicate my original layer. And so I essentially had two layers that were the same and then I drew a mask around this sign. And I'm going ridiculously fast here, but, but I did take a lot of time and actually make that a nice looking mask. So all I'm doing is just tracing around this sign with this top layer selected. And so now I can take out my bottom layer and there's my sign isolated with an alpha. So now that I have this separated, I can call this sign and call this maybe background. I can do different effects to just the sign or just the background. And so the first thing I did was make this sign a little bit brighter and I can also change the color here and I'm gonna just pick this red to sample and bring up the tolerance bring up the softness a little bit and just change that color and so I'll make it that dark green so that worked pretty well just because I'm taking the red from just that sign just this layer and not this background layer because if I were to take it from both layers just copy this on here, then it would start looking really weird. But because I isolated that sign, I'm not affecting anything on this background layer, and I can just leave it alone. Another great thing about isolating elements is, just like I changed the red to green in the sign, I can put filters on the background without changing the sign. And so, so same thing, maybe I'll put some curves on the background, 
and make it a little bit darker and bring down the red channel a little bit make it kind of a darker darker thing and also really quick I want to show you another cool use for masks which is I'm gonna go back to my awesome car turning into a parking lot footage one of the things people really like to do and want to want to know how to do is adding a vignette and so there's a few different ways to add a vignette but one of the easiest ways is just make a new layer make a solid make it black hit OK and then this is cool I can go to my ellipse tool and I can double click it and that will make it the size of the layer and so now I have this layer that's just a circle and I can go to my mask and hit subtract and so now I have my vignette and then I can go to my mask controls under mask feather and just feather it a whole bunch and so now I have this really strong vignette and it was about two seconds of work and so now I can even take this layer and maybe make it a little bit more transparent so it's not not quite as noticeable and I have my nice vignette on my footage so let's say I wanted to do something else to this image to make this car pop a little bit better I'm gonna turn off my vignette for now and I'm gonna duplicate my layer and now I can pick my ellipse tool and I can just draw an ellipse around my car and so now I have two layers I have my car ellipse thing and my just background that's just regular and let's say I want this to pop a little bit I'm gonna take my bottom layer and go to hue saturation and turn down the saturation and so now everything's in black and white except for my car and a little bit of area around my car and so I can feather the mask around my car and there it kinda of sticks out a little bit of course it's a gray car so that's unfortunate but we can bump up the saturation make it pop a little bit more make it a little bit more noticeable so I'll feather that a little bit so that's cool but obviously our car is moving and our mask is not and even though it seems to stay on the car at least it's not quite what we want so what I can do is animate my mask and so I'm gonna hit M for mask and I'm gonna click the stopwatch on my mask path that's gonna set a keyframe right where my mask is right now I'm gonna to go to the start and just kind of adjust my mask That looks good go to my end actually I'll go about here and basically just make my changes here and you'll notice that I started at you know the frame I was on and then I went to the beginning and all around it I didn't just go through and animate the mask you know one here keyframe here keyframe here keyframe here keyframe here and that's because I'm letting the tweening do the work for me and so it's interpolating this mask and it actually does a pretty good job throughout this whole part and so I don't need any keyframes right here because it's doing a pretty good job and so the only thing I might want to change is in between here because the car is just not that wide yet it hasn't turned that much yet and so I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna make the shape be more like what I want and so I'll go through and set a keyframe as far apart as I can and then I'll just hit the middle like in between these two keyframes and check my mask double click on it and adjust it and then I don't have to set very many keyframes this way I can just set you know maybe 10 of them instead of 30 or 40 you know there's no point in doing that and so now I have a pretty good mask around my car so now I have my car that stands out from the crowd in a world of black and white the colorful silver car <laughs> or at least lights and windows on the silver car stand out and it looks awesome so I hope that helps you understand masks and how they're used and um, how useful they can be when compositing with After Effects. So if you have any questions, leave a comment on the video. But for now, um, I think that's gonna do it for me. Once again, my name is Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. 
Thanks for watching.